will tell you a lot more than uh, the accounting equation. For example, I can see net income right now. I can just you know easily see what is in assets by just highlighting this and liabilities and so on. So it is something that we'll have to take a look at even though we can represent it in the same format as the accounting equation. So then C says perform work on account and invoiced. So we invoice another client uh, for work that was done on account. So is cash affected? In this case, no, because we didn't get it. It's on account. We sent out the invoice. We did get something though. We got an IOU. We expect to be paid money. So we can see that uh, these are both assets. They have debit balances and we it's going up, meaning people owe us more money. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it as what it is, which in this case would be another debit. So I'm going to right click on the accounts receivable. I'm going to put my cursor in C11, right click, paste it one, two, three, just the values, the amount being 500. If we debit something, we're going to have to credit something underneath it to the right. Credits typically go on the bottom, just out of tradition for 500. Then the only question is, what are we going to credit here? Why are people going to pay us money in the future? Because we did work and we earned revenue. Revenue down here. Now we can see revenue is an income statement account by the fact that it's below the blue line. And income statement accounts only go up. So revenue only goes up. If we sent out an invoice, we're either going to get paid or we're not going to get paid. It's not going to go to below zero. Again, expenses can bring it down, but revenue only goes up. So we already know we're going to credit it. What is that going to do? Is it going to bring revenue up like we know it should because it should only go up? Uh, it will because revenue has a credit balance account. And if we credit it again, we're doing the same thing to it. It will increase it in the credit direction. So let's do that and see if that's the case. I'm going to right click. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to post that to C12. Right click, paste in it. One, two, three. Then I'm going to double click on the receivable. Now there's already zero in there. I don't want to delete the zero because I can see in the formula bar there's something in there. And if I double click it, I can see what is in there. I want to go to the end of it and say plus and then post the new account receivable here, receivable here, post that and enter. Now it goes back up to 500. So it was at, and if we, if we look at what happened here, we can say, okay, it was at 10 and then when it went down and now it's back at five, that's what's left in there. Okay. And then we're off by the five and now we got the revenue or income down here. So I'm going to double click on this, go to the end of it. Again, we don't ever put a negative in here. I'm just going to hit a plus and then point to this 500 there. That's a credit. This is a credit. It's going to bring the credit up, put us back and balance, bring net income up in this case to 10.5. So notice that this net income, once again, is, is income, not a loss. If I double click on it, it's this revenue minus the expenses because the expenses will be debits and the revenue will be credits. And there we have it. So then I'm going to delete this. Say, okay, my assets are at 10. If I undo it, assets are at 10.5. So assets went up. So we say that went up. There's no effect on the liability. So liabilities are the same. That means that this must be going up. Let's double check that though. So if I delete this, I'm at 10. If I put it back in there, it's at 10.5. That means this went up, which makes sense because revenue went up. Note once again that this is a credit and this is represented by a positive number, not represented by a credit. That's why uh, they do not have brackets around it. All right, so now we're going to do this again. Another familiar transaction should be popping up here. So perform work on account and invoice the client again. Again, we're working on accounts receivable, so this is going to be a typical transaction. We're going to, uh, for the accounts receivable cycle, we can see we, we can see that you know, we do work and they owe us money and then they pay us money. And then when they owe us money, and then they pay us money. That should be that should be how the receivable should look. So once again, is cash affected? No, we did work and we sent out an invoice. We got an IOU. The IOU is similar to cash in that it's an asset. It has a debit balance. We need to make it go up. People owe us more money. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it, which in this case would be another debit. So I'm going to right click, copy that, put my cursor in C14, right click, paste it one, two, three. That's going to be the 600. Then we're going to credit something for 600 right underneath it. And why are people going to pay us money in the future? Because we did work and earned it. That's going to be the revenue once again. Revenue has a credit balance. We're going to credit it here. We already know that because we debited cash. If we credit it, we're crediting a credit balance account, which is the same thing to it as what it is. And therefore, it's going to make it go up because doing the same thing makes something go up which makes sense because revenue only goes up and we earn more money in this case. I'm going to right click, copy, paste that one, two, three. Then we're going to post this out. So I'm going to put my cursor in H6, 
and double click on it, go to the end of it, plus, and go to the 600 and enter. So now we should be at 1100 represented by the two amounts that are owed to us. We're out of balance until we post the other side, which will be in revenue. So you're going to double click on that, go to the end of it, plus, we're going to go to the credit of revenue and enter. Puts us back in balance there and net income went up. And then we can take a look at what happens to the accounting equation. If I delete this, uh, then assets are at 10.5. I'm going to undo that. Assets at 11.1. Uh, that makes sense because accounts receivable went up. Accounts receivable is an asset. Nothing happened to the liabilities because we can see that there's no, no effect in the only liability accounts. And once again, if I delete this and we're at 10.5 and undo, now we're at 11.1. Equity had to go up because if this increases and that remains zero, this must go up. We also know it went up because revenue went up. Once again, we can see that this is represented by a credit and this is represented by a plus and minus number. So then we can take a look at the last transaction, receive cash on account for work done in the past. So 500, so that's the cash we received for this bill that we sent out most likely. So then um, the question being, is cash affected? Yeah, we received cash. Cash has a debit balance. We got more of it, so it's going to go up. How do we make something go up? We do the same thing to it as what it is, which in this case would be another debit. So I'm going to right click, paste it. One, two, three, four, five hundred. We're going to credit something for five hundred. And you might be thinking we should credit revenue because we earned revenue, but we already recognize the revenue. That 11, one is represented. Part of that is that 500 right there already. And we could see that if we do. do Oh, I'm on the wrong cell. There. There it is. So that 500 is already there. So what's really happening is this receivable is going down. So we've got the 1100 there, and that should be going down in this case because someone paid us it, and therefore they no longer owe it. So if this has 11.1 is a debit balance, how do we make it go down? We do the opposite thing to it, which in this case would be a credit. So I'm going to copy that. I'm going to put my cursor in C18, right-click, paste it, one, two, three. Then we'll post this last transaction. So cash is going to go up. I'm going to double click on that, go to the end of it, plus, and then I'm going to go to this 500 there and enter. And that's going to bring cash up and that's going to put us out of balance. No effect on net income. I'm going to double click on the receivable, go to the end of it, and plus, go to the credit. That's going to bring the receivable down to the 600. If we were to analyze the receivable now, we could say, okay, what happened? It went up 10, down 10, up 5, up 6, then down 5 left with the six so that's what that's what the receivable should look like we should we should be balanced people and we should get paid <laughs> hopefully sooner rather than later all right so then if we take a look at the accounting equation over here if we delete this it's at 11 1 if we undo it uh, it's still at 11 1 why because cash went up but receivables went down therefore the assets went up and down no effect uh, all the way across on this one